Well, hi everybody, you join me in the tackle shed because I'm going to have a little look at sorting out my reels for the winter. I don't know about you, but it's come really fast, or it seems like it's come really fast for me because it was warm and all of a sudden it's dropped really quickly. I can see a lot of lakes have cleared up. I can see the bottom where I couldn't see the bottom literally only a few weeks ago, which tells me we're getting cool nights, the fish are slowing down, they've slowed down really quickly. And because of that, I need to think about my setup and how I'm going to approach things. So. What I thought I'd do is I've had a really good past two or three winters feeder fishing, but there's a few things that I do in my setup that I think makes a difference. So I thought I'd share them with you and you can check it out and see what you think. So it's mainly about the main line and how and why I use a particular type of main line and then how I then translate that into the rig, which is what I want to show you. So first of all, I've got the 10 for SL, because you need a nice soft rod in the winter. I'm going to put the extremity 520 on. I know that potentially for some people they think oh that's a big reel um, when it comes for fishing in the winter personally i don't feel it is for feeder fishing of any sort i love this sort of slightly bigger reel you've got to remember most of the time it's on a rest um, and i just like the extra power that i get and for me that that's a lovely balance so i'm more than happy with that it's the rod that has to be mega soft and that's what those 10 foot sls are so if you're looking for a soft rod you know if you're going to fish maximum distances with this rod probably about 25 meters which is where i spend a lot of my time fishing when i'm fishing in the winter for smaller fish so you need a mega soft rod so just bear that in mind so i've got the extremity 520 to go with it now because we're not fishing very far because it's winter because everything's a little bit lighter and more delicate you need a really nice fine main line and I've found that 018 is the, is the right balance. So what I've got here is some four pound sinking feeder mono. There you go, just so you can see it. Probably a bit um, back to front there because I'm trying to keep up with what's happening on the camera. So you can see there, I've got the four pound sinking feeder mono, which is 018 in diameter. I personally, there is a three pound 016. It's not for me to go that light when I'm feeder fishing. Nice, works all right nicely for, um, you know float work actually as it happens it's a nice line for that but for me i i'm i've got a chance of catching a carp on a lot of venues i'm going to if it was out and out tiny fish i might drop down but there is carp on the venues that i'm fishing so i need to have this in mind so this is this is really with fishing i'd say feeders up to about an ounce but half an ounce to an ounce and that's the sort of thing that i'm looking for if you put a six pound reel line on, like an 023 or something like that, because it's a thicker line, when you put those really light weights on, it just doesn't pull off the same, okay? It doesn't pull off when you're trying to cast. It find, The light feeder finds it difficult and everything's a little bit more clumsy. Having this lighter line makes everything so much easier and your casting so much easier, okay? Now, on the spools on the extremity, they're quite shallow. They're not a deep spool. I'll show you what I mean by a shallow spool. Okay, so it's not a particularly... Some reels come with a really deep spool. When you have a deep spool like that, you're going to need some backing. Now, I don't need any backing on this. I'm quite happy putting these 150 metres on these spools. I'm quite happy just putting that straight onto the spool. I don't need the backing. But one thing I don't want to do is have a, a big knot, okay? I don't really want to, to knot the line onto the spool. Now, the reason for that is when you're fishing with such fine lines, particularly with braid, you know, as well, I don't like having the knot there. So all I'm going to do is just take a little piece of electrical tape. So I've got some black electrical tape here. I'm just going to take a little piece of this electrical tape off. Doesn't need to be a lot at all, all right? Literally won't even be an inch i wouldn't have thought so i'm just i need a clean edge to start with so i've just picked it off there so i'm just going to trim a little bit of that up but literally i'd say it's going to be about half an inch something like that let's hold that up to the camera so you can see look tiny little piece of electrical tape and all i do is i just place that on the spool and then i tuck the start of the main line underneath it right i've got 150 meters of line going on here i will never ever get close to all this line getting pulled off so all i want to do is hold it on to begin with all right so there i don't know if you can pick that up there look piece of black electrical tape and the beauty of that is it's completely and utterly flat 
So it means there's no starting knot that's going to get caught on the main line or anything else. I've done a classic error, schoolboy error. I had the bail arm up there, so I've got the, I've taken the spool off. If you like this sort of thing, why not check out www.anglianacademy.co.uk. There's loads of information, really long videos. The detail is absolutely immense. So if you love this, if you love these little clips, check out those longer videos because they could be just the thing to improve your fishing. Just flick the bail arm over and then put the spool back on just so the back, so the line's coming off the right side. Just a little wiggle to get that on there. All right, but that's why I do that. And I do that with braid as well because I don't want that knot at the start. If you've got that knot at the start, it can easily, you'd be amazed how quickly that can get caught when you're fishing with light lines and braid. So I'm just going to start by winding this on. And just make sure this is all on properly before I start off here. Where are we? I'm just messing around. So I want to make sure the line's nicely under this tape. Put it all the way through the tape. Perfect. Held on there. Perfect. And I just tend to get a few wraps on this on this reel nice and quickly. Not under a lot of pressure. I just want to make sure that the line's starting to wrap round. Now, how do I go about loading the spool? So I've got my O18. All I tend to do is I just chuck the spool into a bucket. So I've got a bucket here, I chuck the spool into the bucket and I want the spool to be sat upright, okay? So by that I mean, I want the spool to be coming off the line like this. I don't want it to be sat like that, spooling off the top. I want it to be, I want the spool to be spinning. And I'm sure there's little devices you can get. I'm sure you can get a mate to hold it, all the rest of it. I literally stick it in the bucket and then start winding. Now the spool is spinning around inside that bucket. I've got, I'm holding the line, probably I'd say 30 or 40 centimeters above here. I've just, just tighten that clutch slightly. If the, foot, if the spool slips over, just stand it back up again. But a nice, quick wind keeps the spool spinning. And it means my line is going on without any twist. So if I just laid the spool down on the floor and was pulling it up, there's a chance I could twist the line while I was winding it onto the reel. And the last thing you want is line twist directly onto the reel. Then you're gonna to have to go out, chuck the bomb out a long way to try and get rid of it all. Whereas if you just wind it in like I'm doing there now with a spool is spinning in the bucket, I'm sure you can hear that spinning in the bucket, then it just means that the line is coming on nice and smooth. Now, we're nearly at the end. I'm just keep making sure that line's going on tight. Now this spool isn't gonna be overloaded at all. All right, I haven't filled it right up to the lip because I'm not distance casting. There we go. Pop that in recycling. So look, let's bring this to the camera. A nice full spool, but not over full. Still got the lip there at the top. And that's really important. So I'm fishing with a light line. I want the line to come off the reel nice and easy, but at a controlled pace. So that's why I've done that. I wouldn't want more backing than that. It's, it's perfect. I'd say it's probably about half a mil below the lip. So it's going to be really nice, going to come off nicely. Now, that's the main line onto the uh, onto the reel. And you might be thinking, well, that's easy. Lee's basically used, showing us how to put four pound main line onto a reel. The main thing about what I'm going to show you next has come from fishing a lot of matches. And I love watching it happen because it happened to me loads. When you're fishing with super light lines and feeders, where the swivel rubs on the line, what you find is that that piece of line can break really easily. And believe it or not, probably about, be about three years ago, I was once fishing away and I cracked off with a 15 gram feeder, chucking about 15 meters, much to the amusement of my mate who I was fishing with at the time. And that was because I, as I was fishing, the swivel was rubbing against that main line. Now, if the swivel's gonna rub against that main line all the time, it puts a lot of pressure on that little piece of main line. And I've now, I've since seen a lot of people crack off because they're doing exactly the same thing. So the other thing is, a lot of the places I'm going to, I like to use my free running rig that I've used with a twizzle boom, which I'm sure you've seen loads of times before and it's on other channels if you want to. So all I've been doing, I don't like using four pound line when I do those rigs, I like to use a thicker line. So here we've got 10 pound 
028 sinking feeder mono. And all I've been doing is I literally take about three quarters of a meter, a length of this, and I'm gonna water knot this like a mini shock leader. Okay, so what this is, is effectively a shock leader on my line, but it's never ever going to go into the rings of the rod. It's always gonna be hung out. Now, it doesn't really make sense. I, I understand if I was using a normal shock leader, I like to have the knot on the reel, but that's no good for what I'm doing here. The feeders are too light and where I'm casting, it's too light. The main point of failure comes where the knot and the swivel is rubbing on the line. And because that's the point of failure, this thicker piece of line at the end just gives me much, much more durability. So all I've done there is a three turn water knot. OK, and this isn't about showing you the close up knots. Sure, you know, if you don't know what a water knot is, just pop on YouTube and, and Google it. I've done it also on loads of other videos myself. I've trimmed that up dead tight there. I'm going to bring this in. Let's see if we can camera can pick that up. Look, tiny, tiny little knot. And it's left me well, roughly about three quarters. Now, be careful because some venues you go to, if they are free running only, they might not be happy with the fact that you've got a knot up your line because they might fear that your swivel's not gonna go over. I know my swivel goes cleanly over this knot because I've got a nice big hole in my swivel. So there's no danger of my rig being trapped. If I was to have a disaster and crack off, this rig is completely safe. It'd pull out, look, I can pull that over the knot dead easily there. So that's not an issue there either. But just check with your fishery because I know at Lindome there's no allowance at all for anything up your line. Lindome don't want that. So. That's an example of where you can't use this setup. Lots of other places that I go to, they have no problem with this piece of line on here because like I say, completely and utterly safe. And a lot of places they to use a fixed feeder as well. So of course that would be no problem. But this isn't going to interfere with my rig in any way at all. It's just a little bit of stiffer line to use. So then from here, I'm literally just gonna do the twizzle boom rig. So I'll tie that up for you while we're here because I do a few little nice things with that. It's very neat. And it means I can get my rod ready for the weekend. <laughs> so I've got a um, piece of black silicon here that I like to use just to kick everything off. I'm going to thread that onto the line. And I'll show you all this close up once I've finished. I've threaded my swivel on as well. Let's just pop that down there. Now I'm going to tie the twizzle boom. Now I don't want this to be long at all. About, I want that to start probably about half a metre. All right, from the end of the not so there we go i'm going to start that about half a meter down right tie a little loop in the end so now this loop's probably about 70 centimeters down from that knot if that makes sense let's just show you that so you know exactly what i'm talking about so if i pop that on there give it a nice little pull so all i've done is i put a a small loop in the main line okay look here's the loop in the main line at the end and that is 70 centimetres from this water knot. All right, that's how far it is. Now you can see, look, the silicon and the swivel have run over that knot. Don't worry about them for the time being. And I'm literally just going to twist these bits of line. You've seen this rig before. There's plenty of this on the internet. So, you know, go off. If you're not sure what I'm doing right this moment, just you can find it elsewhere for a close up. I'm literally just twisting both pieces of line to make sure that I've got a nice long twisted boom there, look. All right, and I will tie that over, and I like to make this about six inches long if I can. You'll notice I've got a little tape measure on my desk. Uh, two, four, six. So yeah, I try to make this about six inches long in total, a double loop. And I just pull that down there like that. Now, let's trim that up. And what I'm going to do now is get a number eight stopped, the old faithful number eight stop. Where would I be without you? Let's run this down here. Let me get my twizzle up here. What have we got here? Hang on. Where I've been doing my little twisted boom. We've got a little, caught my swivel up in a little twizzle there. Huh. Above the main line. And it's actually a good example. It shows you how 
these lighter lines. I'll sort that out in a minute, not to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this silicon down. Um, I'm just going to pass the silicon here over the knot of the twisted boom look. All right, so I'm going to pass that over there like that. And then I'm going to pop that start on behind the knot. So look, you can see that there. And then I just push the silicon up over the top of that knot, look. So that is now doubled up, 10 pound, sinking feeder mono. Look how stiff that is. Nice little bit of silicon to kick off from the swivel, which will be free running. And that distance, let's measure it up. Uh, 54 centimetres I've ended up with between the, the, the silicon and the stop knot. So as you can see, it won't affect the bites or the rig or anything like that. It's just that piece of line that the swivel is running on with your feeder attached is much, much more durable. You won't get any crack offs. That water knot is the only knot in the four pound sinking feeder mono and a water knot is probably the strongest knot I can think of with when you're using two bits of line. And the beauty of it is it's three turn, it's super neat. It's, it's four pound line to 10 pound line which really strengthens up the knot. So I'm not relying on a four pound line knotting on itself. Do you understand? And that is why that four pound line needs this shock leader on. It's also very safe. So if something happens and you have a disaster, you're just losing a tiny little piece of line. That doesn't tend to happen very often at all. <clears throat> also, if you're playing a carp or something like that, maybe it's fin is coming near this line, 10 pound line, really reliable. That is my winter saddle. Nice 10 foot soft rod, nice extremity with that four pound line on and this short little length at the end. It's a setup that's caught me a lot of fish, <clears throat> particularly I'm looking forward to going to Barston for a winter pair series this year there. And this will be my setup there. So I'm gonna do a couple of uh, 10 foots, a couple of 11 foots and I'll be covered for everything. Hope this has taught you how to set up for winter feeder fishing. If you wanna get out there, get on the commercials and enjoy some great fishing. Have a little go at this setup because it could really help you out.